All right, what's happening? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and it is that time. Y'all know my favorite time of really the entire season. Free agency's fun, and I love Sundays. Also, really love Saturdays, man. But, like, the draft season is, like, my most exciting time. I love team building. Y'all know me, man. I'm Mr. GM. So, it, this this ramp up, this, this, this hype, this building, I'm super excited. You know it was time for me to come with part one of the list of Washington's targeted 2022 draft draft prospects we did this last year of course the link will be in the description for y'all to access the pdf version of this file so you can take a look at this list yourself a lot of y'all were here last year so y'all already know how this goes down for those of y'all who may be new which is a good thing because that means my channel's growing so i welcome it for sure but i will present to y'all a list of the reportedly targeted prospects so far for the washington commanders and of course i break down like how they're targeted did we meet with them at the combine are they scheduled for a visit because those things hold different weights like going in for a visit is a way stronger indication that we may draft you than we just simply had a formal interview with you at the combine or we just talked to you at the pro day and then i also keep track of how many different times we've met with that player at least so far reportedly all of this stuff is from report i'm pretty sure we've talked to and looked into way more players than this so far but so far this is all i can scrape the internet for right now i've used so many different websites so many different sources twitter i've done everything i can so this is all i have so far and of course this list is gonna grow leading up to the draft so of course i'm gonna have to do a part two and i may even do a part three depending on how rapidly it grows because if we just don't get any real information and then now we're at the week before the draft and they and it's only like maybe five more guys added to the list then we'll just do a part two adding those guys but if for some reason within the next two weeks it's like 30 more guys or more and then more guys get added right before the draft then we'll do a part two and a part three so we'll see i hope that i end up doing a part two part three i hope it's so many people i end up doing a part four because again this is the type of stuff that i love i love the off season and my favorite part of the off season is draft season so I'm, i've been watching a bunch of film sessions for all of my channel members y'all already know but for those of y'all who are not i've been doing raw and edited film sessions for my channel members only like completely unedited i've already done darian bevers i just did jameson williams and i'm probably gonna do daxton hill next maybe looking at some chad muma i'm definitely gonna look at some of these guys that we're targeting eventually i will do a handful of film sessions that i'll put out for everybody to see but that's gonna require like a crazy amount of editing and organizing where these raw and edited film sessions i'm just throwing up the tape and giving you my live reactions and they run from between 20 minutes to an hour so if you're not a channel member definitely become a channel member so you can gain that content but i mean this is a big intro i just wanted to give you all the general background info on this type of video and how many more you may expect again some y'all already know what's going on again check the link in the description you can access this file right here that i created from scratch i just did it in excel organized it color coded it all of that stuff so if you ever want to refer to it to have a good idea if you plan on doing mock drafts y'all know me man i have my several mock drafts i gotta do i just recently did a mock draft at the free agency now i'm gonna do a trade back scenario which is probably my favorite scenario for this year i hope we trade back and then i'm also gonna do a trade up scenario and then finally right before the draft maybe like a few days before like the draft starts on thursday i'm gonna probably put this out like tuesday it's gonna be my most realistic one so it's gonna be based off of this list right here it's gonna be my best attempt to guessing who we're gonna get rather than who i want this recent mock draft i just did a few days ago the trade up the trade back will mostly be filled with guys that i really want us to get and sometimes who i want us to get is also a realistic choice because you have guys like chad movement that we've actually met with and i would love to get chad movement in the second round but it's more so me showing y'all who i really like in the draft even if it's unrealistic for us to get them it's also me like putting y'all on to underrated prospects especially when you start getting to the fourth and later rounds but then that final mock draft is going to be purely based on what i think they will do and not what i necessarily want them to do and that's why i'll even include undrafted free agents because it's me just trying to guess how many guys we're going to bring in now i'm not going to cheat and just throw in 20 undrafted free agents and then when we draft one of them in the sixth round i'll be like hey i called it you know what i'm saying so i'm going to include maybe like five undrafted after free agents just some guys to watch out for that we may end up taking after the draft is done or who may sneak into our draft in like the sixth or seventh round 
And based on this chart that I'm doing, I mean, Jamin Davis, nobody should have been shot. There were a lot of reports that we were really interested in Jamin Davis and I had him on my list. And then we ended up taking him with our first round pick. So these reports mean something. The guys we show interest in, the guys we meet with in person, the guys we talk to a lot at the combine, we bring in for visits, all of that type of stuff. That stuff really matters. But let's go ahead and get into it, man. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure you check out the rest of the content on the channel. Like I already said, if you're not a channel member, go become one because I'm coming out with those raw and edited film sessions very often. Like when we get close to the draft, like maybe the last two weeks of the draft, maybe the last week, those will definitely start coming out daily. I may even do more than one in a day because you know I got to get my Georgia guys in there. Even though I don't think it's necessarily realistic that we'll draft any of my Georgia guys, I got to do film sessions on them. I mean, first of all, I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan and then they just won the national championship. So I feel like they've earned it. I feel like I'd be doing them dirty by not doing film sessions on at least the top draft prospects and maybe even some sleeper ones to put them on the radar a little bit more. So again, go become a channel member to get access to that content without further ado let's get it all right so before we dive into the list just wanted to show y'all like it's color coordinated so round one is like picks one through 32 round two is 33 through 64 and then round three is normally 65 through the hundreds round four is normally the hundreds to the 140s round five is normally the 140s to the 170s round six 170s to the 210s round seven 210s to the 250s and then undrafted free agents or anybody just beyond that so just to give you a good idea of what the color coordination means why some players will have a certain color some players will have another color all of that type of stuff and before we dive into all of this first of all this side is incomplete because i mean at this point it doesn't really matter where they are it's not enough players for any of this to really matter but y'all already know my biggest needs are future franchise quarterback middle linebacker free safety wide receiver tight end guard power running back and defensive tackle depth and it pretty much is in that order in my opinion even though like i can see an argument why tight end may actually be way higher than people think future franchise quarterback i doubt we're gonna get one so it's really useless to have one here but y'all know who i want in the draft and then free safety i mean technically we don't really need need one but i would really love to get somebody like a daxton hill later in the first if we could trade back up into the first from our second round pick or if we could trade back to get another first maybe trade back and get both of those chiefs first round picks something like that i mean and i can also see some people feel like receiver is a huge need i'm only down to take a receiver high in the draft if it's james and Williams the other guys I'd be willing to trade back and hope they fall to us that's just neato but tight end I mean I could definitely see how this can be a higher need because as of right now if we're talking about who's going to be healthy and available for week one projection wise it's literally just John Bates and Samus Reyes Ricky Seals Jones went to the Giants and Logan Thomas may not even be ready by week one as far as health goes so like tight end is actually a pretty dire need we're taking a tight end we may take two of them in this draft whether it be through the undrafted free agents or later in the draft I think we could honestly Honestly, realistically take one probably within like the first two rounds probably in the second round at the latest probably the fourth it would be nice to have that third round pick though because that's a sweet spot for tight ends right now but hey gave that up for Carson Wentz but yeah these are the suggested biggest needs based off of the chart based off of where they're placed on the chart how many of them there are you know what i'm saying it's several factors taken into account this is so far what i've come up with but again it's not a lot of prospects so none of this really matters yet it'll definitely matter more later on but let's go ahead and get to the list i mean and the fact that this entire list can fit on one screen like we don't have to scroll is enough said they really just aren't a lot of prospects there's only 16 nobody in the projected sixth round no one drafted free agents nothing one guy in the seventh one guy in the fifth two guys in the fourth three in the third nice handful of guys in the second but it should definitely be way more than that and only three in the first and it's definitely gonna end up being way more than that as well and of course like we're gonna also add more connections as more things because maybe they'll show more interest in Traylon Burks later and it won't just be combine maybe he'll be scheduled for a visit as well and I will increase the two for the times met I mean let's go ahead and go from top to bottom and also before we start this is based on the draft networks big board rank like their consensus rate where they put like everybody together and have their own big just general big board from all of their writers and analysts 
So, I mean, it's not necessarily like I agree with this list as far as their rankings, but I mean, with all of the guys that influence this list, this is probably as realistic as it's gonna get. Of course, there's gonna be some mistakes here, some errors where it's like, why is that guy that high? Why is that guy that low? But compared to other peoples that may come out like a singular person, like maybe Matt Miller or like Daniel Jeremiah, or Todd McShay, Mel Kuyper, all of those guys, I prefer to just go with the draft network because it's a team effort of like, I'm pretty sure it's like 30 plus people that they've come up with this big board consensus together. So again, this may not be the most accurate. I may not even agree with all of this at all, but this is just the one I want to use because I, I feel like it's the safest for sure. So right now, the highest that we're interested in on the draft network's big board is 19th overall prospect wide receiver Chris Olave from Ohio State and so far this is the guy we've shown the most interest in I mean Ron Rivera even met with them in person Ron Rivera even talked to their wide receivers coach the Ohio State wide receivers coach we met with them at his pro day personally face to face and he's scheduled to make a visit to the DMV soon so like that's by far the guy we've shown the most interest in even though some of these other guys even though all you see is combine even though you've only seen one time met it's a little bit deeper than that and that's why I go through these prospects to talk about it. So you also have quarterback Malik Willis, 27th overall, Auburn to Liberty, met at the Combine. Again, I doubt we take quarterback, especially in the first. And I feel like, honestly, when you get to a certain point in the draft, don't even try it. If you feel like you can wait to the fourth round and get a quarterback, don't do it. Because, like, you're just wasting a pick. That could have been like, say, Terry McLaurin or Antonio Gibson in the third. You're more likely to find a successful receiver later in the draft or a safety than you are a quarterback. Like, I, I, I think it's far safer to say that we can find a Cameron Curl equivalent to any skill position or anything outside a quarterback in the seventh round than you are to find a Tom Brady. I think it's safer to find an impact receiver, safety, edge rusher, linebacker, any of that type of stuff in the fifth round than you are to get Russell Wilson. So I just, I think taking a quarterback late, if you don't really like the guy, don't even waste your time. I mean, maybe bringing in some guys and some undrafted free agents, but I don't even agree with using the late round pick on quarterback at this point. I used to, I can definitely admit I used to, but now it's just kind of like, you might as well just go ahead and use that pick on a potential starter at a different position. Cause you never know. You may find a camera curl in the seventh. You may find a Cole Holcomb in what the fourth or the fifth. You may find a Chase Roulier, I believe in the fifth. You may find a Terry McLaurin and Antonio Gibson in the third. I think that's far more likely than finding a star franchise quarterback in the later rounds. So, hey, man, after the first round, after the 11th pick, honestly, even if you're willing to trade back for one of them, I don't think it's worth it. If you don't want to get one at 11 or even trade up to get one of them, don't take them. You also have Kenny Pickett, quarterback from Pittsburgh, met at the combine. I mean, y'all see the list. Y'all been looking at it the whole time I've been talking I mean, the only significant players that I could really dive into individually is probably Chad Muma from Wyoming. It seems like there's significant interest there and it's very realistic for us to get him in the second round. Again, if you trade back, you can probably get Chris Olave with like the 20 something pick and Chad Muma with the 20 something pick. I, I really wish we had Daxton Hill on here, man. I think Daxton Hill is going to be really special. I think people are really sleep on him. To me, he's literally just Marcus Williams, but faster. And you can argue even more versatile. I think he's going to be a star at the NFL level, man. I, I really hope we get Daxton Hill. But so far, there's no reported interest. But who's to say that we're not interested in him? But based off of this list, so far, realistic kind of mock draft is Chris Olave in the first. Chad Muma in the second. I don't know who in the third. Maybe you double up on linebacker because, again, I just can't see us going quarterback in the third. Maybe you get Majai Saunders. And then in the fourth, Nick Cross at free safety, athletic freak. And then in the fifth, Jalen Weidermeyer. That makes sense. Not explosive, but already a pretty decent route runner. Can work on becoming a better blocker. You may have a dual threat tight end right there in the fifth. And then again, we have no projected players in the sixth. I would have drafted a guy from the fifth, but we don't, we only have one guy there so far. Maybe Alec Pierce slides all the way down to the sixth round. I don't know. And then Abram Smith running back in the seventh formal interview as well. So we'll see. So far, basically everybody's just mostly combined. You have two formal interviews that like formal interviews, basically, I don't exactly know. It was reported as formal interview. So I don't know if that was pro day. I don't know if that was combine or something something separate more than likely combine but i'm just trying to report it as i get it i don't want to try to guess any information 
um because i don't want to skew y'all in the wrong direction at all and then carson strong was at the senior bowl and i'm pretty sure we met with way more guys at the senior bowl so i'm just waiting for that information to come out as well so again this list is incomplete but i just wanted to give y'all a nice preview of what's to come and what we know so far so y'all can go ahead and get excited start to get your mock drafts underway because if you're trying to be right again with my mock drafts until i do my final one my goal is not to be right it's to show y'all who i like the most in the draft and why but i'm trying to be right with that final one right before the actual draft happens but if y'all were already in the business of trying to be right early on then here's a nice list of players that you're quite likely to be right about i can man chad muma in a second just seems like it's destined to happen like honestly at this point if we don't end up drafting chad muma in the second or late in the first if we trade back i'd actually be pretty surprised i mean the interest there is very strong and it, the fit just makes so much sense to me like i've already talked about in a previous video he's basically like a slightly more athletic blake martinez and if you can get slightly more athletic 2020 blake martinez from the giants i think that's a perfect fit for our defense no he doesn't necessarily have the potential to be a bobby wagner and all pro but he's exactly what we need for our defense to basically have no holes in it so i'd be excited about getting chad Muma for sure of course y'all know man I, I want one of my quarterbacks in the first specifically my dog from auburn but i think receiver makes the most sense to me if we're gonna take a receiver with the 11th pick it's gotta be Jamison Williams nobody else if you're gonna take any of the other guys you might as well trade back but I mean there's strong interest in Chris Olave so I mean like <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we take Chris Olave with the 11th pick and then I mean we just gotta find more guys that we maybe I mean maybe third round instead of taking one of these guys maybe we take Christian like if we don't get Chad Muma in the second maybe we take Christian Harris in the third if he slides I don't know but Nick Cross in the fourth makes a lot of sense if we don't take free safety within the first two rounds oh yeah remember we don't have a third round pick i'm dumb forgot all about that i just mentioned that earlier in the video I, i'm just flabbergasted by the fact that we don't have a third round pick in arguably the deepest draft in nfl history because of all of the covid 19 chaos a lot of guys that should have been in the last year's draft waited to play another year so they can go into this draft so this is literally going to be the deepest player pool in nfl history and probably will never be topped again unless there's something that a pandemic hits us again like covid 19 you're not gonna have this many players available in one singular draft guys that would have gone in the seventh maybe even sixth round in previous drafts are gonna go and draft it because it's just that many guys so for us to not have a third and a fifth round pick in a draft like this is crazy i just remembered that we also don't have a fifth round pick right now so i don't even know about Jalen watermeyer right there we're gonna get to our fourth round pick and we're gonna have to choose between nick cross or Jalen watermeyer at this point point. and me personally i take my chances on nick cross i like Jalen watermeyer but nick cross is a freak athlete and safety man if we if he can end up being that super rangy free safety or at least be what we hoped bobby mccain would be or like a kyle duggar something like man i i would love that be what we missed out on and marcus williams even though i'm not necessarily confident in him but i'm just saying impact wise if we can get that man that would be huge but yeah man i mean it, it's hard not having a third or a fifth round pick and as we add more players to this list and you try to see okay we get this guy in this round this guy in this round we're gonna truly see how hard it is to maneuver around this draft without a third and a fifth i'm pretty sure like i'm just for so many reasons for the reasons i want to trade back is because i just feel like there's no receiver worthy of the 11th pick other than jamison williams to be completely honest he's one of the only guys in this draft i feel like has star potential even ignoring the touring acl but even just beyond that and trying to get another first round pick to maybe draft chad muma a little early so nobody else has a chance to get him we also need to find a way to accumulate more third and fifth round picks or i mean maybe you get another fourth or something to make up for the fact that you don't have a third and a fifth i don't know something we definitely need to do some maneuvering leading up to the draft or during the draft so that we can not just walk out with only a first a second a fourth a sixth and a seventh round pick well we have two sevens but i mean that that's 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 nice but it's not like having a third and a fifth but yeah man like i already said in the long intro i'm gonna keep y'all updated on this when we gain more prospects i'm gonna add them in one at a time and once we reach a certain amount of new additions to the list i will definitely do another video like this one and update the list for y'all again link in the description you can access the pdf version of this file so you can look at it whenever you want to access it whenever you want to if you plan on doing a mock draft on one of those mock draft simulators you can have this list up right next to it free of charge I, i'm doing this for me 
like I love organizing stuff like this this is how I organize my entire life my to-do list look like this anything I love like my colognes my wall plugins anything with smells I have it organized like this and rated all the stuff I watch like anime shows movies organized like this so I'm I was gonna do this for me anyway but I just figured hey I have a YouTube channel I'm pretty sure other people would want access to this so why not do a video on it and give you all the link to access it as well I just feel like that would have been so selfish to go through all this work again I was gonna do this anyway for me but to just not put it out for free definitely would have felt like a hater at that point but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please like this video if you liked it if you learn anything please share it to other people who you may feel like would love to see a video like this and have access to this file and of course man i appreciate all the supporters man shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now again exclusive access to my consistent film sessions to my channel members only so if you're not a channel member go become one and of course man i appreciate y'all i'll catch y'all later i'm out <laughs>